Hello gardening friends. Welcome to my home in Flagstaff, Arizona. And today I want to talk to you about something that is near and dear to my heart and that is saving seeds. And this is a subject that is very interesting to a number of people. Now at the end of the video, I have done a demonstration of how to um, save seeds, how it's done. We'll leave that till the end. But right now I just want to talk about some reasons why you might want to save seeds. The first reason is that it's a skill that um, a lot of people want to learn how to do. Kind of makes them feel like a pioneer. And right now, seeds are easy to obtain. You can get them at the store, you can, you can order online, and you can get them through a catalog. But there might come a day when you can't get them, so it's something good to know. The second thing is that saving seeds is a real challenge to you mentally because there's a huge variety of um, seeds, plants, and every plant species the seeds are different, and so it, it's, you, it's not one size fits all. You are just constantly learning and having to learn what each different plant will do. For instance, a lot of, seed, a lot of things go to seed during that first year, but, a lot of, but some plants, like Swiss chard, it takes two years, so you, they don't set seed until the second year. Other plants, you have to wait until they're totally mature. So it's a real learning process, and it's something that keeps your mind uh, very, very active, as I can attest to. The, um, the third thing is, it's educational. And this is a great thing for a family project to do with your children, or if you're a teacher, you homeschool, private school, public school. And it's great for children to learn the whole process from seed to plant to seed again, and the whole life cycle of a plant. So that's a really good thing to do as well. Um, and it can be quite profitable. Um, I sell seeds at my farm stand of things that I raise and I put them out for sale. And um, that has really brought in a little bit of extra income. There are some people that do this as retirement income, maybe a second um, kind of a side business. Um, and there are some people that have actually turned this into a very profitable enterprise where they have multiple employees working for them and it's big business. So there's a lot of ways you can um, grow seeds uh, that are really quite profitable. I think though the most important thing is that um, what we want to do is we want to save our heirloom seeds for future generations. And so I have um, some, I grow asparagus, my, I grow it from seed, and my dad got these seeds in the 1960s from an old Pioneer Flagstaff family. And I have been growing them, and I have about uh, 250 asparagus plants now that, uh, that I have where I sell the asparagus at my farm stand, and when I have extra seed and plants, I sell those as well. But this is really great, and I found that these plants are actually hardier than any of the hybrid plants that I have tried. So, um, so that's really uh, a, gr a great thing to have and to um, pass down to my children. Uh, another thing I have is hollyhocks. I got these from an old homestead in Illinois. They're just a beautiful variety of colors and very unusual. So um, I have uh, sold those for years and years, uh, grown them, sold them, and uh, I might do a video on hollyhocks at some point in time. So uh, we'll go now, we'll transition to doing the demonstration. So thanks for watching this, this portion of it. I would like to show you a demonstration of some seeds that you can save and uh, so what I have first here is the Cosmo and Cosmos are a great seed to save and it's because you want them to mix with colors you want them to mix with patterns so that is really great you don't have to be careful with them so here for instance this is a beautiful Cosmos we'd use that in a bouquet that's not going to set seed here's one that has probably been pollinated by the bees it's not ready whoops this one is also maturing along but it's not ready but now let me show you this one this one is ready so you can see the little black streaks in here those are seeds and those are going to um, form plants next year and maybe this color maybe something different now i found if they open up for instance here's some that have opened up you can harvest them when they're like this, but it's very prickly. So what I do is I just get them when they're looking like this with a pair of clippers, clip them right off. That saves your fingers. You can do it much faster. And then I let them, I have them on a cloth like this 
in a tray or something so that they will dry. So that's how you would do Cosmos. Now here's another seed that is fun to save, sweet peas. So here is a sweet pea and these have already burst. Now this is an example. So these are an heirloom sweet pea um, and it's fall now and so they're, they're completely done. Sweet pea seeds will literally burst and fly through the air 10, 12, 20 feet away. So you want to get them when they are still closed, when the shell has turned brown. And um, even when it opens a little bit, the seed is still, still saved in here. So that's an example um, of a sweet pea. Now nasturtiums, so here again, we have the nasturtium blooming. You can see how, how pretty that is. That's for bouquet or eating. And then you have this one, which is setting the seed. And you can see the little tiny seeds in there, nasturtiums form three seeds, that's all they form on a, on a single flower. And then down here, you leave it, you just let it set on the plant until the seeds get nice and big. These aren't gonna fly, they're just gonna drop. I kind of sometimes like to come along and pick them, uh, and when they're ready, they will just literally kind of fall apart in, in your hands. Now here is a tray of nasturtium seeds that I've been saving. So I drop the green seeds in here. I give them lots of air, put a towel down on them um, or under them so they don't get um, too much moisture. The dark brown tan ones that are kind of shrivel looking, those are now ready for seeds. I package those. Um, I sell the, the Cosmos, the sweet peas and the nasturtiums um, at my farm stand. So um, that's how you would do nasturtiums. One more here. This is a Johnny Jump Up, Viola, little tiny guy. So these are, I can tell you a funny story about these. So these are great for eating as well. And I sell the plants, I like to save the seed. So this is what the seed pod looks like. Let me see if I can get this, when it's mature. And then this is what it looks like when it, is, when it bursts open. Now one time, knowing that these bursts open and fly 10 to 12 feet, I thought I'm gonna put them in a jar in my cabinet. When they get to the point where they're ripe, they're looking good, I dropped them in there. Well, they exploded out of the jar, all over the cabinet, all over the kitchen counter. I had uh, seeds everywhere. So you might wanna kind of make a little deeper jar to put those in. But that will give you um, an idea of, of how to do these seeds, how to save them. and go ahead and try it because this is trial and error. You're not gonna get it on the first time. You're gonna cut them too soon. You're gonna cut them too late. And so it takes a little while of experimenting and practicing to get the seed just right at the point of where it hasn't flown yet, hasn't taken off, um, and, but yet it is a mature seed that is not, going to, that is not too green. So ho hopefully that is helpful. Thanks for watching, bye.